Hi everyone. I welcome you to the Linguist United Conference 2024. It's now we want pause, yes. And uh, I see you already using the chat, so everything is working. Please also use slide though. Today we will be having a quiz. Also using it. So uh let's practice together and uh, try to use this uh, cool app. <laughs> Today is the other topic is the digital kids and we will be talking about different digital platforms uh, together. So a lot of surprises today. I hope you will enjoy this day and uh, thank you everyone for coming. Uh, I'm not myself like alone today. I also with my colleagues. Victoria, are you there? Can you show yourself? Hi. Hello, hello. Hi, everyone. I'm very happy to be uh, here today. And you know what? Yesterday I was uh, at the conference, but as a participant. And today I'm uh, uh, as a speaker. So uh, it's pretty crazy. You know, it uh, takes uh, lots of work and time and preparation. But when the day comes, it feels so good. So I'm very happy to be here with you and present my topic today. Okay, uh, so you uh, was yesterday at North Day, I, I heard correctly. Uh, tell me, participants, uh, there you are. There you are there also. Put pluses. Put pluses. Oh, yes, uh, I to understand that uh, you already uh, like a regular to have a conference and you already know some of all. Oh, I see people. <laughs> Uh, okay, uh, do we have new faces? Uh, someone uh, who chosen to come only today? Uh, put uh, put like minus as fast to uh, differentiate you. <laughs> okay, hello, hi. I can see only pluses. Yeah, it means that we have a lot of uh, people coming for all the days. I I believe it's interesting. Yes, that we will be. Oh, I see. Panic. For well, one minus, I see. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, oh, double pluses. Uh, <laughs> we can only guess what does it mean. Probably <laughs> you will uh, come to all uh, the events, not only to the conference. Yeah. Uh, so, uh, yeah, so thank you for being the with us today. We have a Mrs., uh, our webinars. Yes, I they enjoy so. such events and we can gather together uh, as uh, ELT consultants of linguist company and uh, have a chat uh, with you. And also, uh, you know, probably know, they have the podcast and uh, the last one, uh, uh, Victoria was uh, one of the uh, speakers now. Speaker? Uh -huh. Yeah, so we can try to create these opportunities to meet together, to talk about linguists, to talk about problems that uh we experience in our um, work and also we would like to talk about uh challenges that we have as ukrainians uh, and ukrainian teachers and uh, i know that we have uh, alarms around uh, ukraine right now so uh i hope you are safe uh and protected but uh, i also see that we have a big geography today a lot of uh, places are joining us I'm myself from Zaporizhia. Victoria, where are you from? I'm from Sumy. Yeah, so Zaporizhia, Sumy, we expect Kiev and uh, Tatiana Shalepka to join us uh, as the third speaker today. Uh, you are uh, probably have seen the agenda for today. Uh, we start with uh, Tatiana's uh, topic, then uh, Victoria will give us uh, a prep uh, speech about platforms. Uh, and Online platforms, yes. Yes, and uh, I will be finishing uh, and uh, playing a quiz with you, but I will ask our uh, speakers to stick to the quiz. Uh, I believe it's interesting how they would answer all the questions that they wrote for you. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> as they will written only one question to you, each speaker, and uh, I'm not sure that we will be able to answer everything if we are not really possible, um answers like for each question. Uh, there are five 
answers. So you need to choose. Oh, I will tell uh, you about certificates in a second. Let's uh, wait for people to join us. Let's give it uh, like a minute or two. Uh, as I see people are uh, joining, uh, for all of us to hear together. Yeah. And uh, I believe it's important uh, that we meet as a community uh, these days. And uh, thank you for giving us advice that it uh, should be done uh, during March, uh, as uh, we have more time uh, in these days yeah, uh, to meet and to talk about ELT topics, talk about uh, ELT trends, talk about uh, some uh, general questions that we are interested in as the Ukrainians. Yeah? Uh, I can see there are lots of people from uh, Dnipro and Kyiv, Kharkiv, Vinnytsia, Lviv. So um, that's really cool. From all around the places. And uh, uh, the more you write, <laughs> the bigger your uh, city becomes on this uh, word cloud. And I believe it's interesting it's how they can share ideas quickly uh, online it's one of the uh, apps that we use very often for our webinars i propose to you to uh, take a no uh, note and uh, use it also with your classrooms if you're teaching online very good cool. uh, i myself enjoy it and i see people still writing okay we have a pretty lot of participants uh so Okay, Hello. Yeah, oh, the chat is very active, as I can see. Uh, okay, I believe we are ready to talk about uh, uh, certificate. Yes, one of the interesting parts uh, for today. Uh, I need to mention that you will receive your certificate of participation. But, but we are changing the rules. We are changing it a bit. Uh, uh, we will send you a survey for this uh, webinar, uh, for this conference day uh, separately and ask you to help us to improve it. Uh, we'll ask you what you liked and uh, what uh, topics you would like to discuss with us. So uh, in two working days, Zoom will send you uh, a letter. Uh, this is a link. Please fill in a uh, uh, that uh, survey and uh, we will uh, generate you your own certificate. It will look like that. As you can see, it will be your name there. Then uh, right now it's written you uh, with a heart, yes. And uh, also uh, there would be mentioned uh, three hours that you spent with us. And uh, don't forget that each certificate needs to be combined together with the program. And in the program, uh, we will uh, lead uh, all the topics of uh, what we discussed today. So, another just download uh, certificate, and that's all. Take the program. We also take some uh, um, paths that we will leave for you, some apps uh, that we will propose you to try. Uh, so, uh, I believe. We are almost approaching. Yes, I will start. Tatiana, are you with us? Oh, I see. Hello. Tatiana, uh, being with us today. We are talking how many people uh, are coming today and also um, uh, having a broad geography. Yes, uh, they have several questions in the chat. So, uh, yes, they will be separately for each day. Yes, and uh, it will come to your emails that you used for the registration. Yeah. Uh, as we hope that uh, you're interested in different topics, not just uh, in general coming to conference uh, to get all the knowledge. Yes, that's why we propose you to think critically about what you've seen, what you've heard, what you would like, um, and uh, then fill in the form, okay? So I believe it's uh, time to give the place to to Tatiana, yeah, to to start her topic. Okay, so okay, uh, hello everyone, and I'm really I'm really happy that uh, we are. We are here <laughs> and uh, uh, that we are having this uh, topic um, in this uh, time when it's really 
important and appropriate uh, to talk about um, uh, to talk about digital literacy to talk about um, tech age uh, and uh, uh, today's topic from me is tech kids age and digital literacy actually uh, so um what uh, we will uh, talk about before we go, I will just remind you that uh, Cambridge um, Cambridge University Press and Assessment has uh, as its motto uh, in recent years, uh, it has uh, the idea of where your world grows. What does it mean? It means that um, except for uh, working with language, uh, we also involve uh, the approach of uh, developing life competencies, uh, cognitive control functions and foundation layers such as uh, digital literacy, emotional development regarding life competencies. It's uh, critical thinking, creative thinking, social responsibilities and so on. Regarding cognitive control functions, it's all about uh, developing imagination, uh, developing memory, and uh, uh, in addition to that, uh, we... Um, we have all our materials informed by both teachers and experts in English language teachers uh, in English language teaching, uh, which means that uh, we are piloting all the materials and ask teachers what they think about it before they go public. Uh, and uh, uh, that's why uh, that's why all the materials are based on real life English and real life needs of the teachers. <clears throat> In any case, we will go to our topic right now. And uh, what we will cover today, it's digital uh, pedagogy, what this is. Uh, we will have a slight and brief um, uh, take on what digital uh, pedagogy is. Uh, we will talk about what digital literacy is, and uh, we will look at a few digital literacy activities for young learners uh, because today we have uh, the uh, kids topics uh, we are talking about digital literacy among young learners before we jump into the um, topic uh, right away like with me talking I will ask you to um, yeah to give your answer what is technology for education is it good is it bad or is it inevitable Nothing difficult, uh, but uh, I will ask you to scan the code or to go to the website you can see on the screen and uh, click on your on your idea. I should have put some music while while you're uh, <laughs> voting for your answers. You know what uh, uh, satisfies me the most in these answers? Uh, it's uh, the fact that nobody votes for bad. <laughs> this is uh, pleasing. I will wait a little bit more, but looks like we have the uh, appropriate statistics. It's really interesting that most of you think it's good because I find it inevitable. Uh, really, I find it, um, well, it is inevitable. <laughs> it's a fact because good and bad, it's your opinion. And I'm really happy to see that your opinion is that technology is good for education because it's really a great instrument. Um, inevitability of technology in education is just a rational approach to the fact that 
this is happening and there is no way escaping this. So it's better to think it's good. Uh, yeah, thank you very much for all who, uh, who left the answers here in slido.com. And uh, just for you to remember, it's a great tool for your students to, um, to work on different, uh, to, to organize different activities like quizzes and uh, even assessing your students uh, with this multiple choice tasks. There are also cloud tasks and other ideas that you can see on Slido and it's easily uh, integrated into your PowerPoint presentations just as we did it right now. Okay, moving on. What is digital pedagogy? Uh, digital pedagogy is nothing much different from just pedagogy. It's uh, the, <clears throat> the the main um, the main uh, subject of digital pedagogy uh, is actually the same: studying, learning process, teaching process, uh, and uh, uh, the. Uh, the ideas for different categories uh, of children age categories and uh, there are <clears throat> different uh, even even now there are different branches already of digital pedagogy uh, and <clears throat> The uh, the main task of digital pedagogy is to see uh, what's appropriate for different ages and what they have. They have key stage one, key stage two, uh, three and four. So uh, key stage one uh, is um, uh, the, there is key stage zero as well, which is pre-primary. And there is digital pedagogy for pre-primary students. Uh, and uh, um, in any case, pedagogy, as, as we know it, as the teachers, we know what it is. But the presence of digital pedagogy has uh, promoted the ELT community to re-articulate the discipline of pedagogy in an age of abundance of resources, opportunities, and networks. Uh, and um, it is important to emphasize that pedagogy still plays a key role and has um, set the foundation for the discipline of digital pedagogy. It is as much about using technology and digital tools as it is about deciding on when not to use them. And that's a very important part here because we tend to think, okay, digital um, digitalizing education means that everything goes digital. No, the idea of digital pedagogy is for us uh, to decide when and where it's appropriate, when and where it's not appropriate, where it's inevitable and where we can um, simply work without it. And uh, the same the same thing was happening the last time the huge change in pedagogy in in the history of pedagogy happened in uh 17 18th century when um when they decided to make the classroom system we still have the classroom system but finally we got to the moment when um the there is the next turning point when we go from um, thinking about how communicative or less communicative grammar approach or not grammar approach, we have now the whole change of the whole system that um, is not only about English, but about the whole uh, idea of education where students tend to have more autonomy, uh, more um more ways to develop uh, their oh, in their own pace uh, without sitting in one room and being dependent on um everything in this room so it kind of spreads uh, the uh, span of students um, um, students' possibilities on how they can learn and how they can uh, learn in their own pace. Uh, and uh, talking about digital and technology, there is this different because um, we have input technologies such as new learning materials, for example, uh, Presentation Plus or IWBs or uh, like interactive interactive whiteboards, uh, projectors, uh, VR headsets. Um, and just recently, like in 80s, before that, we didn't have uh, the ability to listen to authentic language, uh, to authentic spoken language. But uh, now it's everywhere and we have 
easy access to any person who can <laughs> who is a native speaker um, and we can do it online and we can even communicate with them so it's a good thing um, interactive technologies is a little bit different than input technologies uh, these are different devices and software to encourage language production and interaction such as quizzes uh, or what we're doing right now video conferencing uh, and portable technologies and this concerns different devices that we are using uh, for our uh, for our learning process uh, and regarding the benefits of digital uh, pedagogy uh, there are of course uh, different concerns but still regarding the uh, benefits the um, Javit uh, in his research in 2011 said that uh, using digital resources provide young learners with more time for active learning in the classroom Digital tools and resources provide children with more opportunities for active learning outside the classroom, including blogs and forums and access to digital, digital games with a learning benefit. Uh, they provide young learners with a wide choice of learning resources and uh, safer spaces for formative assessment, al al alternative assessment and feedback. Um, at the same time, the research that came after uh, by the Canadian uh, Canadian researchers, uh, it was held only in Canada, but it says that children who spend um, more than 30 minutes per day at the screen uh, tend to have uh, less ADHD than those who spend more time in front of the screen. Still, this 30 minutes uh, is, and we're talking about the children aged from six to eight years old. And uh, uh, it means that uh, we need to understand the limit when we should use technology, when we should stop doing that. Uh, and uh, it also uh, means homework, but um, it's, sitting in front of the screen and being active online uh, or being active with technology is a big difference. Uh, and there, there was another research that said that uh, it doesn't matter of course, it's important for uh, students to have total physical response and so on. But it doesn't matter uh, whether they read a book or sit in front of the screen, um, uh, how how much time they spend here or there. Uh, the benefit only comes when they are being active. And, that's, uh, and active means motivated. And that's our job, to motivate our students to work, not to just get distracted in all those screens. And um, the online world is very much like the street you know you go and you can get distracted by anything or you go and know your destination point and go specifically there to do something like you either go to a restaurant or to a library and the same you do on the internet um how to be active online for example let's have a look at this game this is the board game from uh, Kids Box New Generation, Level 2, Unit 3. This is the revision game. Uh, and uh, uh, you can play this game with your students online. And for that, you can use such a simple tool as the video of dice. So you can easily roll the dice like this and stop it. And we have two. So start. And we have what number is this? And students need to say, uh, yeah, then we continue. Okay, six more. We remember we are on two. We go one, two, three, four, five, six. Again with the number and so on. So um, being active uh, means that you can have this video. You can send this video to your students, uh, ask them to share their screens and not just to uh, to talk. Like, for example, I used Slider before we started. Uh, it means I involved you in this process. Now I'm talking because this is the webinar. But with the students, you will need to have more tools. And it means you need to be more uh, digitally literate uh, to, uh, to teach them how to use these tools. OK. Uh, and 
important note that in this age, in this um, throughout this digital development, children develop self confidence and the ne necessary skills to understand the world around them and the purpose of foreign language learning. Uh, we can have a look here. This is uh, this is Cambridge One platform. And uh, uh, I just made the uh, the video of the screen. Toys in the toy box. Come alive. Walk and talk on the count of five. One, two, three, four, five. Let's play hide and seek. <laughs> Trevor, close your eyes. And count to twenty. Okay. So uh, this is um, <clears throat> this is the example of uh, how students develop self confidence, responsibility, and different necessary skills. Like here, we have listening reading uh, skills, um, comprehensing skills, because this is the story that students watched during the lesson and they had tasks during the lesson with the book. But this is their self-practice on Cambridge uh, One platform, where they can easily re-watch the story, but then the tasks are a little bit different. Uh, but students already have some input, and they, uh, they of course, need some digital literacy to be able to uh, go online to their account, to uh, find everything, to click everywhere, uh, the, the most basic skills. But uh, what they are actually developing here is the listening skills. And um, mm, the task is designed in such a way that it goes through the whole story uh, in kind of gamified um, format, but at the same time, these are uh, the uh, the tasks that relate to uh, to the same tasks they had at the lesson. Uh, and if you want to <clears throat> dig deeper. Uh, on uh, uh, digital pedagogy, uh, there are uh, tables and research like this one, uh, how it goes through cognitive and physical development, how it goes through communicative development, social responsibility development, and so on. What should be used at each age? Uh, and uh, here we're talking about key stage one, which is primary. Uh, and uh, you can find all these ideas, what's better to use, what's not to use, and what um, kind of skills, digital skills they should have, like highlighting patterns, uh, developing concepts, narratives, uh, being able to write in digital tools with smart pens or in their phones and so on. Uh, and uh, uh, yeah, this is communication and language, like what kind of materials you can use for specific uh, specific tasks, uh, like grammar checkers, uh, problem-based learning tasks, and uh, all of this you can find. I will show you where exactly later. Uh, and uh, um, yeah, and uh, just look through to see how it can correlate with your lessons. Uh, and right now I will ask you to fill in the gaps in here. And you can see that it's written here, just guess. So <laughs> you don't need to know it properly. Maybe you heard something while I was talking, but try to just guess. And you can write, you can type it in the chat. So I will open the chat now. Whatever ideas you have, what can uh, uh, can be here? Sense of humor, <laughs> curiosity, understanding of the world, sense of learning, could be knowledge, world. 
Okay, thank you very much. Here comes the second one. Any ideas that come to your mind? Uh, you read the sentence and think what else could go in the same range. Uh huh. Thank you very much. Sense of achievement. Well, thank you. Someone wrote critical thinking, imagination, development, confidence, fun, self. Oh, so cool. You could be researchers, you know. Okay. And uh, here comes the last one. Uh huh. Digital tools. Language one apps. Okay, great. Technology. Thank you very much. Let's check your answers here. Uh, and yeah, <clears throat> in the first one, it's sense of responsibility. I was talking about it previously. So it's about autonomy and sense of responsibility or something like that. And <clears throat> sense of humor is my favorite <laughs> answer here. Uh, absolutely right with the world here. Here, uh, it's just a range of um, of the ideas of the researchers, but uh, still, uh, you can you you can see maybe some more ideas for yourself. And here, yes, technology. It's those who wrote tools, apps, perfect. It's about technology. And what you've just read is uh, the um, uh, the summary uh, of the table I showed below uh, about how digital uh, pedagogy works on the key stage one, which is six to eight. If you want to learn more about key stage zero, two, uh, with other um, age categories and so on, you can uh, find this white paper digital pedagogy for young learners after the webinar we of course we will share all these ideas uh, or you can just google digital pedagogy for young learners cambridge university press and assessment and uh, you will easily find it uh, but of course we will add it there Regarding the uh, question I had in the chat, there was a question about the Canadian study. Uh, the results are there and they say that uh, 30 minutes in front of the screen, um, if uh, students spend more than 30 minutes in front of the screen, uh, they uh, tend to develop ADHD more than those who don't. But Against this study, there is another one, because spending uh, time in front of the screen and being active in front of the screen is a little bit different. Uh, so thank you for that question. And you can find deeper uh, analysis of what's going on there with that Canadian study in the Digital Pedagogy for Young Learners white paper. Uh, and we are moving on to the second part of uh, our webinar, what is digital literacy? I will not stop here for a really long time because uh, there is this wonderful brochure that can explain you everything step by step. Uh, and it's there for all the ages, starting from pre-primary, finishing with professional development. Uh, and it shows you competency and we are talking here about digital literacy which is the foundation layer here uh yeah digital literacy together with emotional development and discipline knowledge in our case this is english and the rest are life competencies that go as a through line uh and you see they intervene in each case so 
digital literacy is not uh, that much of a competency, but it's rather a foundation layer through which all the competencies are being developed. We cannot uh, develop digital literacy without uh, critical thinking, learning to learn, uh, collaboration, communication, and so on, as well as we cannot do the same with English language or emotional development, it intervenes. Okay, uh, so digital literacy uh, is a foundation layer uh, and it breaks into three main components such as using tools and creating digital content, sharing and interacting online, and safety and well-being online. These are three main components, uh, core areas, uh, that also fall into more subcategories, which we call components. Uh, and for example, here is using tools and creating digital content as a core area. Uh, its component is developing techniques for searching and managing digital data, information, and content. And there is a task, uh, this task is called keywords. So uh, to complete these tasks with your students, for example, what you can do, you uh, listen to audio recording, read a text or watched a video, ask your students to identify keywords for the following two purposes. To use in a web search to find out more about the topic, and to create an appropriate uh, file name for a digital record uh, of the audio, text or video file so that they can easily find it again. Like to make a folder and to, uh, to put this audio there, if it's downloadable audio, uh, to create a name, uh, keywords to search more. And um, we uh, we just watched a short part of the video with toys that come alive. Uh, and you could ask students to uh, create a name for that video, uh, to, to make a name for this um, audio, uh, video file, but it will also be the name of the story uh, that they have in the book. Maybe they would want to make their own name for this story. Uh, another another one, again, in the same core area, using tools and creating digital content, like we had here. Uh, uh, but the um, component here is making critical judgments about digital data, information, and content. And uh, we have it here, developing techniques for searching and managing here, making judgments. And uh, these components are the same for pre-primary, primary, teenagers, adults, uh, it's all the same, but uh, the can-do statements are a little bit different. They are simpler here. And so the tasks are much simpler than for adults. So here we have the task, is it true? Uh, for example, when learners encounter information in digital contexts within course materials, uh, like uh, in the form of the website, blog post, or podcast, write the text from the box below on the board. Is it true? Read and listen closely. Do you think this is believable? Why or why not? Uh, who do you think wrote this? Why did they write it? This is my favorite task uh, when we listen to the audio files. There is, of course, if, if it's not a song, uh, but even with the grammar, who do you think wrote this? You know, when you ask this to your students, they think a little bit wider. Um, look at other websites on the same topic. Do they give the same information? This could work with clear texts, with... Um, with uh, I mean, with young learners, uh, this could work with your CLIL tasks or arts and crafts, maybe. Like, this is a triangle. Why do you think it's true? Is it really a triangle? You can Google it. Maybe it sounds different in English. Maybe it's a circle. Uh, and these are very simple, um, simple. Uh, so we, we don't ask students to work with news, whether it's fake news or not fake news. We just teach this skill. So this is a triangle, it's written in the book. Are we sure? Let's have a look at some 
mathematics website in the dictionary yeah you can send them to the online dictionary and uh, type triangle there will be a picture of a triangle okay this is true uh, so uh, yeah you you can think of very simple things to find out whether it's true and develop not just li digital literacy but also critical thinking uh, we can also work with character profile, ask students to make a profile for uh, one of the characters. These are characters from uh, Kids Box New Generation, uh, and uh, uh, they are playing hide and seek in this story. That's why there is only Maria's hair here. But uh, we have Maskman, Trevor, Monty and Maria. Uh, the main characters who uh, are the toys and they come alive and they do their strange things and uh, help students to um, discover English language, grammar, phonics, values and so on. Uh, and you can ask students to make a profile like uh, choose one of the characters. My favorite is Monty and think of how old is Monty? It's not written in the book at all, but we can make this profile and we can make it uh, like uh, online easily uh, or put it in the presentation. Take a picture of Monty um, and create, uh, create some ideas like what's his favorite color? I don't know. He looks pink, so I put pink here. Uh, what's his position? I wrote here a mouse, but who knows what Monty does in Kids Box New Generation? Is there anyone who works with this book and who can tell me what is Monty responsible for in Kids Box? You can type it in the chat. What is Monty responsible for in Kids Box? Okay, hello everyone. Again, I'm sorry. Can you see? Uh, can you see the screen? Okay, thank you. Sorry, something happened. Something funny. Food, cheese. <laughs> okay, so. Uh, I can see that there is no one using uh, using Kids Box here. You should, you should, because it's a wonderful book. Uh, Monty's responsibility is phonics. He is responsible for uh, teaching students to read, to speak, to uh, recognize the uh, patterns with the sounds. Uh, so it's all about their phonological awareness. And yeah. Uh, Let's go further. We have character profile and um, there, there is the whole set of cards that can uh, teach you how to go digitally literate with your students uh, in a young, uh, younger age. Yeah, so these are activity cards for young learners. They are the same for teenage learners and adult learners. And uh, of course, we will share them with you um, in the thank you letters. Uh, 
in addition, we have Teachers Talk Tech uh, podcasts that uh, can be really helpful for you. Uh, you can see the topics and there are different episodes you can listen to uh, on the go uh, in on your mobile uh, devices or wherever you wish. And you can see that they are on YouTube, Apple, uh, Spotify, and so on. Uh, so there is the set of podcasts from Cambridge University Press and assessment. And uh, we have a separate uh, digital journey uh, where you can learn more about digital literacy, digital pedagogy, and well-being. Um, and you will find all the resources I was talking about there. Please check out Kids Box. Uh, because it's a very digitally well done course, not only digitally, but also methodologically. And uh, uh, it's really colorful, nice, and there are print books as well. Uh, Superminds is another, uh, another uh, young learners course that you can check out. And they also have digital support on Cambridge One, as you can see. And uh, they also have the training modules for teachers, how to use uh, Cambridge One and all the tools that it involves. In addition, there are mm, professional development courses that you can look through on the same platform. And do not uh, forget to uh, um, uh, th that we will send the certificates not right away, but in some time. These are my contact details. My name is Tatiana Shalepko. Uh, I am Cambridge University Press and Assessment ELT consultant. And uh, uh, if you have further questions, these are my contact details. Thank you very much. That's it from me. Thank you, Tanya, for uh, giving us uh, such uh, awesome speech about digital literacy. I believe we uh, learned that we need to read more about it, yes, and uh, get more information on it. Uh, so, uh, do you have any question in the chat? Seems no. Yeah. Okay, I've seen several questions about certificates. Uh, be sure we will send you uh, a form to fill in uh, within two working days to your email. Okay. <laughs> Tanya, they are thinking you are saying it's gripping and uh, absorbing. Uh, I'm trying to find uh, how can I get Cambridge One? Uh, I have a question here. Uh, you just Google Cambridge One and log in. Uh, it's very easy to do. Uh, you use your Facebook account or Google account to uh, log into the platform and that's it. You will find all the demo versions of different courses uh, and it's all there. Uh, okay. Uh, I believe we are ready to start our first break. Yeah. Oh no, we have one more question. I can get the code. Uh, if you uh, if you use Cambridge materials, the codes are in the book. Uh, if you want to get a separate code, uh, you um, you will need to contact your manager in the linguist company, and um, there will be a fully digital code. Prepare codes don't work. Please text me in person uh, on uh, on the email address you saw, and we will try to fix that. Oh no, certificates not not the most essential. I believe it will be uh, the great bonus to what you will receive today, and uh, with all the materials you can uh, fuel your research on uh, digital literacy. I believe it's not topic that we just pick up one more time and forget about it. I believe it's uh, a trend that we will be following and discussing with you more. Yeah. Uh, so please stay tuned. Uh, I give you five minutes for a break. Uh, and then we will return with the topic of uh, Victoria. OK. Um, one second to share with you. <laughs> 
The world of education is changing. We want to help you adapt to the challenges and deliver successful learning experiences. Whether you're teaching English online, in a classroom, or a mixture of the two, Cambridge One will meet your needs now and in the future. With the upgrade to our new digital learning environment, you'll discover easy and flexible access to digital resources across all your devices in one place. Motivating bite-sized mobile content and gamified experiences, plus time-saving tools for marking homework, class creation and user enrolment. Easily track your students' progress to support their learning and guide your teaching with Cambridge One. Explore your new home for digital learning. Visit cambridge.org forward slash one or speak to your local Cambridge sales representative. Peep inside Dan and Kim's family bookshop and discover the marvelous miniature world of Pippa and Pop. This three-level pre-primary English course book sparks learners' imagination by focusing on three competencies. <laughs> Early literacy. Visit Kim and Dan's bookshop where beautiful stories and illustrations encourage early literacy skills. Simple sounds and letters lessons, based on phonics, are an effective way to introduce reading and writing. <laughs> Learning through play. Pippa and Pop love games, songs, and projects, and your learners will love them too. Guided play and child-led activities develop communication, creativity, and thinking skills. Organizing playful lessons is easy with all the digital materials for you and your learners in one place on Cambridge One. <laughs> Learning to Learn Pippa and Pop lessons follow the Cambridge Life Competencies Framework, teaching skills that are important for this age group. Learning to Learn activities build good learning habits where children notice their progress. With fun projects and friendly characters, children become independent learners, confident in all subjects. So join Pippa and Pop's world of stories and play at cambridge.org slash Pippa and Pop. Super Mind Second Edition turns learning English into an adventure. And now almost transforms the classroom into the movies. Whoa! Whoa. Look, Look at, at the, the characters, characters now. now! There are thrilling missions full of mystery and danger. And it's full of fun and meaningful activities to help us develop the skills we need for the future, like critical thinking, creative thinking, and being mindful of others. Spending time on other subjects for studying teaches us much more than English. And they've even found a way of making grammar fun. And as we're young adventurers, always asking questions, there are big questions for us to explore. Teachers and learners can now supercharge their classrooms and homes with Cambridge One, with all kinds of digital resources in one place. Presentation Plus gives teachers super presenting powers. And we've got Practice Extra, additional activities to practice what we've learned in class, plus games to keep us engaged, songs to help us remember all the vocabulary, and even brain breaks. We may be super minds, but we need a break sometimes. So come on, teachers, take your students on the adventure. Set off at cambridge.org slash superminds2. Fun is important in primary education, but I think fun is important in life. I think everybody should find fun and satisfaction in whatever angle of life they're working. Children need to have fun when they're learning. Absolutely essential. An essential part of learning is enjoyment. If they're not enjoying what they're doing, then they won't be receptive to it. We've seen over the last few years how important the whole aspect of resilience and finding fun in everyday things can be. I mean, there is no other job in the world that you can just be completely 
silly. You can let your hair down and you can be somebody singing with a microphone or you're riding an invisible motorbike and they are doing it with you. You know, they're all getting on their motorbike and it's just brilliant. Oh, I absolutely love their energy in the classroom, their energy, the way they develop your, 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 when you teach them, their characters as well. Each child is completely different. Uh, they have a completely different character throughout the whole of the 40 years. I've never had two children that I could say have been exactly the same. It's very, very dynamic. When you open the book and just look at the first page, the vibrancy of the colors just uh, hits you. And you think this is something that looks like it's worthwhile investigating from the first moment. Kids Box New Generation is bigger, brighter, and even better, even better. It's astounding. I believe we are ready to return. Victoria, are you with us? Yes. So we welcome you uh, to continue our discussion about digital world of primary learners. Yes. Hey, thank you. Thank you very much, Vicky. I'm going to share my screen. Uh, Just mm. a second, please. Okay. So, let me just stop in. I'm giving you a note. Okay, so uh, tell me, please, whether you can see my presentation. Just put glasses. Oh, uh, I can. I can't see your answers. I don't know why, but ah, uh, okay. Finally, yes, I see glasses. Okay, super. Hello, hello. So um, today. Uh, we are talking about how to enhance learning experience uh, using online platforms. And, you know, in this um, digital time, in this digital age, uh, technology has become mm, a vital part of our lives, uh, even from social media to online learning. Technology has changed the way we uh, communicate and uh, uh, work and uh, uh, learn. So, mm, and it uh, uh, has got the potential to uh, enhance uh, the student's learning experience in a different ways. But at the same time, mm, it is important to remember that uh, technology um, is just a tool, yes, and uh, its effectiveness depends on how it is um, integrated into the learning um, process. So the key here is uh, to find the right uh, balance between uh, traditional methods and uh, technology to create this um, engaging uh, learning environment for all students. So, and right now, I ask you to complete uh, the sentence. And the first sentence is, to me, using digital tools in class is, or let's say, using um, technology. Mm -hmm. So, please. Uh, type in the chat, useful, funny, funny but challenging, exciting, mm -hmm. helpful, enjoyable, an essential part. Okay, it's a new experience. 
important, interesting for kids. Absolutely, especially when we are talking about uh, primary school students. Engaging, yeah. Again, I see um, challenging, practical, okay. Uh, then, okay, I see that. The next question is, how often do you use digital tools in your course? How often? Every day, mm-hmm, yes. I believe that it's um, impossible to have a lesson without using different digital tools. Mm -hmm. Very often. Yeah, we can say that almost every lesson. Absolutely. Okay. And um, the main question is, why? Why do you use it? What is the need, like the purpose? I guess, yeah, uh, to encourage necessity. Uh, it can be used to engage and to motivate students in the classroom. A very effective, uh -huh, to involve in activity, mm -hmm, good. To have a successful lesson, to make learning better. Mm -hmm. Okay, okay. Again, I see necessity, yes, absolutely. I. I totally agree with you. And you know that um, the internet is filled with a uh, plethora of learning resources that can help students um, explore new ideas. For example, you can use um, online videos or uh, interactive quizzes to, um, to enrich your uh, lessons. And again, um, digital tools uh, can also be used to uh, facilitate collaboration among students, you know. Uh, even when your students uh, use a tool just like uh, Google Docs, students can work together on different projects and uh, uh, share their ideas and feedback with each other and um, what is more uh, we help our students to promote global collaboration as well uh, due to um, online platforms uh, which uh, enable students to uh, connect and collaborate with the um, peers from around the, the world and uh, uh, again we may say that uh, technology uh, help to promote the 21st century skills like critical thinking and problem uh, solving uh, because um, um, technology-based activities often uh, require students to think critically and uh, analyze information and uh, solve problems. And again, uh, we uh, equip students with uh, essential digital literacy skills. And um, let's not forget about uh, distance learning as well. So um, it uh, uh, facilitates online learning environments. And um, uh, it uh, makes the learning process um, easier, I think so. Okay, so, and um, there are different ways uh, to enhance the student learning experience. And we can say that videos actually can motivate students to um, engage with, uh, with the language. Uh, young children are naturally uh, glued to visuals, uh, unlike adults. They are primary tool for uh, understanding isn't language, it's um, visuals. So students can see and hear language being used in their um, context. And um, some educational videos um, contain uh, different quizzes, 
you know, polls and um, interactive elements. Again, it uh, helps to keep students involved in the learning process. Um, the next one is gamification. So actually it's um, the process of using uh, game-like elements to uh, engage and motivate students. Again, um, by turning maybe boring uh, tasks into games, students are more likely to stay engaged at least we hope so. <laughs> and um, they are motivated to learn. For example, um, you can use a game-based learning platform to teach, let's say, grammar, um, different grammar structures. And um, gamification can be especially effective for uh, students who are visual or um, kinesthetic learners, because um, it allows them to um, engage with the material in a way uh, that is more um, interactive. And um, when you provide uh, students with access to online resources, you can help them learn at their own um, pace. Uh, for example, you could use Quizlet cards or interactive vocabulary exercises, which are um, designed for each module of the textbook. And um, it's always a good idea when students can have access to interactive textbook, not just a uh, printed one, um, but uh, um, interactive as well, so they can practice the language at home and uh, uh, have the opportunity to listen to um, the pronunciation of the lexical items or read and listen to the dialects or do some exercises and uh, uh, to have immediate uh, feedback. And uh, speaking about online learning platforms, um, I can say that um, it's um, a great tool, especially in the primary school classroom. And I will show you. And um, having the textbook is good, but um, the lesson, which is filled with different videos or animations, presentations, games, movements, um, is even better. And children like to have fun when studying, um, unlike a textbook where students uh, maybe passively receive information. Uh, online platforms allow um, them to um, participate, to be active, uh, like to be active learners. And um, here, um, I can say that um, online learning uh, platforms take the best aspects of uh, textbooks and uh, um, combine them with the um, engaging multimedia elements to create a more uh, enjoyable uh, learning uh, experience. So it's like the difference between uh, reading about a ro uh, roller coaster and uh, actually riding it. So, but speaking about uh, the times, it's all about time. Um, about integrating online learning plan platforms into your classroom. I guess um, the first few minutes of a primary school lesson are crucial for setting tone and activate prior knowledge. And um, you can use online um, platform to warm up your students. Uh, but uh, mm, uh, you need uh, to consider uh, what uh, you want your students to achieve in this uh, warm-up activity. Uh, do you want them to review vocabulary or maybe practice some basic skills or activate um, prior knowledge on a topic? 
and then choose activities that um, align uh, with your um, objective. Um, for example, for uh, um, introducing uh, new vocabulary or uh, reviewing previously known uh, words uh, to um, activate prior knowledge, you can use online platforms that offer uh, drag and drop um, matching games where students um, match words with uh, pictures or definitions. And um, if you um, um, click through the book, you can see um, different um, lexical items uh, that students uh, learn in this or that unit. And again, then we use the um, online platform, uh, students can um, find the same words um, that they are uh, taught at school and they can practice it, that can, uh, they can revise them at home. So actually, uh, it can be not only as a warm-up activity uh, in class, but as a whole assignment as well. And uh, um, uh, throughout uh, the unit, um, you can uh, dedicate a short um, portion of your lesson, maybe five, five or ten minutes, um, not more, to online activities. And um, this can focus on uh, practicing specific skills um, like subject, verb agreement, or um, different um, verb tenses. And again, it can be drag and drop activities where uh, students drag the correct verb tense into a sentence, or maybe they sort words into different uh, grammatical categories or um, complete a sentence with the uh, appropriate uh, word. And um, some platforms offer um, fill in the blank exercises um, as well. So uh, these um, exercises may contain um, audio clips or different images or short animations, again, um, to make practice more interactive for young adults. And um, you can uh, set up uh, learning stations in your classroom uh, with uh, one station dedicated to online platform activity related to the grammar point or maybe skill um, you are teaching. And the students uh, can do the exercise individually or with the classmates, like um, um, with the part, right? Just uh, allow them to work together um, on different online activities. Again, this will promote collaboration and peer-to-peer -peer, uh, learning. And um, you can use online uh, quizzes and games as a uh, um, formative assessment. So um, actually, this can provide um, valuable insights into areas where students might need additional support or maybe explanation before moving on in the unit. And again, uh, they will receive immediate feedback. So um, online um, quizzes and activities um, can provide students with uh, immediate feedback on their, on their um, understanding. And um, it's like, uh, having a built-in tutor who can guide them on the spot. And uh, um, you can use um, this um, data to identify any areas where students might need this additional support. 
and um, help them. So, and um, the end of a unit uh, is a prime time for uh, revision. But uh, traditional uh, review methods can feel repeated, even a bit dull. So uh, the students can take a test at the end of the unit, um, which will uh, assess students' understanding of vocabulary, um, some grammar points, or maybe key facts uh, learned throughout uh, the unit. And um, again, they will receive this immediate feedback, um, which uh, will allow them to identify areas for improvement. And as you can see, uh, this is um, uh, the revision page. Um, actually, this is uh, the last page of each um, unit, if we are talking about the textbook Young Stars. And again, your students can uh, take a test using online platform, and uh, then it uh, will be their uh, maybe an overall test, or again, it can be a form of uh, um, assessment and uh, it can be um, done at home as a home assignment as well so um, this is uh, uh, your choice but um, i think that uh, there are some things that you need uh, to consider when you choose uh, the online platform uh, i just uh, uh, recommend you to spend uh, some time exploring uh, the platform yourself, because uh, this um, will help you understand its uh, features, identify uh, suitable activities, and to maybe find uh, potential uh, challenges. So look for uh, platforms offering um, games, uh, quizzes, or uh, interactive exercises that can be completed within five minutes, not more. Um, platforms uh, should be um, designed for young learners with simple um, navigation and colorful interface and uh, clear um, instructions so and uh, here you can see the ELT platform uh, and I will show you uh, this platform uh, but uh, here you can see the screenshot right and this is a student's area like um, the interface of um, a student's account and as you can see it is very simple like a uh, user-friendly interface mm, and um, um, there are uh, clear icons and uh, large uh, buttons uh, that are easy for them to uh, to navigate. And so the students can see uh, the textbook. Uh, they have got uh, two buttons like practice and tests, uh, and uh, they can also uh, see they are progress. Okay? So, uh, like all the um, modules and tests that they have completed. And uh, again, they can uh, see the immediate uh, feedback with the percentage. And um, um, if uh, necessary, uh, you can introduce um, basic navigation. Um, of their platform before uh, diving into uh, activities and um, choose platforms that line up with your uh, curriculum and uh, learning objectives. Don't just um, assign tasks and leave uh, students to, to work alone. Uh, you can uh, use uh, the platform activities as a springboard for uh, discussions and ask questions about um, student uh, choices. And um, again, uh, platforms uh, that track uh, student uh, progress 
and uh, provide reports allow you to monitor individual learning and uh, um, identify these um, weak areas where students might need extra um, support. So, and speaking about uh, the ELT platform, um, this platform is connected to the MM publications uh, course books and uh, um, it uh, uh, contains uh, additional exercises like practice, um, practice uh, um, section and uh, tests. So it um, um, can be accessed um, through any device, computer or a smartphone or tablet and um, um, you can uh, decide which exercises uh, to make available uh, for students and well. And um, you also um, receive feedback about the student's performance with um, plenty of uh, statistics. And um, um, it allows you to keep uh, track of the progress of uh, your class or of uh, each um, student. And um, mm, um this platform is um uh, designed to be uh, easy to use so um, no special id uh, skills uh, or a lot of uh, extra time is uh, required but again uh it can be used as a digital tool for supervisors and teachers and as a digital self study solution for students so we need a uh, supervisor, teacher, and a student. Uh, right now, I want to show you. Okay, so um, tell me, please, uh, do you see um, MM Publications website? Yes, okay, thank you. So here you will find ELT platform. Okay, so you need to choose this one, ELT platform. Okay, then your next step is here. Okay, and here you are. Um, so if you are in UB, you need to um to register your school. So you need to uh, choose the uh, supervisor among your colleagues, or it uh, can be you, and uh, you need to register your school. So uh, you choose activate only once, only once. Uh, actually, when you register your um, edu uh, educational institution. So first of all, you select plan, you need to choose standard. Then you select course book. And you can um, use this platform, ELT platform, not only when we are talking about uh, the textbook Young Stars, but also when you are teaching English using um, Google Blast or um, new destinations as well. So let's see. Uh, you can see in your destinations or in user in special. Uh, this is uh, the new um, edition of uh, the textbook. Okay. And here we've got young stars. So you choose this one. Then we need to type the number of students, the number of teachers, and you've got the date. So let's go further. Actually, now it's important information, and uh, if you uh, want to use this platform, uh, I kindly ask you to remember this kind of information as well. Uh, so, uh, you type the name of your school, school address, city, then you choose um, 
country just like this, Ukraine. And here you provide your personal information. Again, this is a vital information. So choose your first name, your surname, email. Again, you confirm your email. Don't forget to put a tick here that you agree with the ELT platform terms of use. And finally, you press submit. So um, you have registered your school. And um, the supervisor uh, manage teachers, actually, um, he or she um, adds teachers um, to this platform. And then uh, each teacher manages um, his or her classes. So, um, for example, she creates accounts for each student. Mm, okay, and I want to, to show you the um, teachers area. Where is it? Okay, so, and here you are, you are a teacher, and you can use this um, platform. There will be your um, email address and your password. And then this is your um, I just want to, to check it. So uh, this is um, your account, your teacher's account. You can manage your classes. So actually you um, add, oh no, okay. I will do just like this. Mm -hmm. Okay, so you manage classes. As you can see, it's so, so simple, like four big item, uh, icons here. Yeah? So you can see your course books, for example, Full Blast and Young Stars, and you want to add uh, students. So it's just like this. Okay, we can see young stories. The third level, and it's very easy. So only name and surname, and then generate accounts. And uh, you will get um, automatically generated accounts, like um, the username with the password for each student. Okay. So, speaking about uh, different exercises, I just want to show you. So, here, select assignments again. We are interested in young stars today. So, let's have a look. Your class, class A. Ah. And right now, you may choose whether you would like to take additional practice or maybe tests. Let it be practice. So, and you have grammar, listening, and vocabulary exercises for each module of the textbook. And let's say I want to choose the second module. And it's grammar, so the children need... Um, to put in is on under and so okay let it be so they just type um it is my father where is the cat it's let's say under the bed where is the lamp it's let's say in yeah you've got she is so pretty simple, right? And then uh, here you've got submit. Yeah, so your students press submit and they can see um, the right and the wrong answers. Yeah? 
So they are of different colors. Or let's say uh, vocabulary. So again, I choose the second module. And you see, so they need to read and match different pictures, activate their prior knowledge, lexical items they have learned in this module. Or let's say tests. And you can see eight um, tests for each module. For example, I would like to choose the second, uh, the second one. And here, let's see how many? 20, 20 questions. Again, they can complete it as a test at the end of the unit, or um, it can be the home assignment. So what do you need to do? You put a tick here, you choose date, yeah, let it be today, and you press submit, and your students, okay, will receive the notification that um, they have got a test to complete. Okay, and again, you can see, uh, like you can track the progress of your students in this spot. Again, you need to um, choose a course book. So ob obviously we will have two or three, maybe one textbook, and um, it will be very easy for you uh, to navigate. Okay. So again, you can see like uh, plus statistics, so maybe uh, each student uh, pretty uh, um, easy to use and um, I guess a very useful uh, resource for you. Okay, and back to my uh, presentation. So, um, here I would like to share my contact information. Uh, you can see my phone number, my email, Okay, have you got any questions? Yes, there are several questions for you. Yeah, Is it junior for Ukraine on LT platform? Oh, no, actually no. You can use it with the inter international textbooks. The yeah, AHA, uh -huh, I see. Is that platform free? Actually, if you use a member publications uh, textbook, you can use this platform for free and you have the access uh, for one year and then you just need to renew the access. So that is why um, I uh, pay attention to the important information uh, when uh, you register uh, your school. So you need to keep in mind uh, this information like your uh, email address as a supervisor, uh, your school name and uh, uh, the textbook. I have a question for you. Uh, if a person win today uh, one of the Iman publication books, hmm. is it possible to use ELT platform? I think so. I think so. Should they contact you or they can use uh, themselves? Um, actually, uh, he or she uh, may try to do it uh, himself, let's say, um, or I'm always available and I will help you to register uh, your school and uh, uh, to navigate uh, um, this platform. Thank you. I see that we have no more questions, I believe. The answer to that Thank you very much and um, see you tomorrow. Okay. Uh, so, I give you a five minutes break. Uh, we will listen to the music. We, we will relax. Yes, learn a bit more about Plot platform. So, stay tuned. And we will meet with you in five minutes.
Uh, you know, I'm a senior ELT consultant of Linguist Company, but I'm also uh, ELT consultant of National Geographic Learning in Ukraine. Uh, we are proud suppliers of these books. And uh, uh, today I will be sharing with you uh, the ideas of our publishing house about uh, virtual world and also everything that we uh, can say about digital materials. Uh, I hope it will be interesting to you as uh, uh, as you can see, each uh, publishing house uh, has own views and also proposals. Uh, most of them uh, cater to needs and uh, tell you that uh, they can make it easier. I hope uh, my proposal will also be interesting to you as uh, we will be talking about how to bring uh, the real world to the classroom yes but the classroom that is digital uh online offline uh they use a lot of uh, gadgets right now and uh they communicate differently uh so obviously i hope it will be interesting to you uh so please stay tuned and uh i will remind you that the most attentive uh, ones uh, i go with the flying colors through our quiz uh, about what you had today, and uh, obviously it will be tomorrow too, uh, so please pay attention. I will be telling you and showing you two important things for me today. I will be showing you the uh, other primary uh, hit uh, title that called Look, and also the platform uh, that called uh, the Spark platform. Uh, so obviously I will tell, uh, I will tell, uh, sorry, I will I'll take you with myself and uh, show you the pages and everything. But before that, I have a big one uh, question for you. Uh, is that uh, who we are? We are digital natives or we are digital citizens? How do you feel about yourself? Are you a native to technology or you're a citizen? Yes, I know. I also enjoy such pictures. They call it uh, high impact pictures. Uh, and we will be talking about this uh, today. Uh, so we are not, we are not digital natives. 50 50. Yeah. Citizen. I myself can say I'm closer to native, uh, like, <laughs> uh, like a Aboriginal. I'm running around trying new technology and uh, it's a test of trial for me to see what is working, what is not. Uh, okay. And uh, we will be talking about this today, uh, digital natives and digital citizens. Uh, and, uh, uh, obviously, uh, it's uh, one of the struggles that we have with uh, our uh, primary learners. Uh, obviously, they develop differently uh, than we developed. And uh, there are some differences and even different uh, generations that I myself, uh, I don't know which, uh, which letter uh, am I? Uh, but I definitely know that I'm not a millennial, but <laughs> some of the other <laughs> uh, very close to it. And technology can be a bit scary, uh, scary for me. Uh, so obviously, I know sometimes we can be, uh, yes, citizens. Oh, sorry. Yeah, uh, was doing very quickly. Uh, we will be talking about interactions and also trying to spark up all uh, technology that we will be doing. Okay, uh, my big question for you that I want to ask you today, uh, tell me uh, all these three gadgets, yeah, and other uh, personal computers, other tablets, other phones, uh, which you use the most? Not as a teacher, just as a person. Phone, okay, phone and smartphone, all of them, okay. Uh, at the same time, is right now I have phone, uh, two phones and uh, laptop, yes, laptop or uh, uh, computer. Uh, okay, tablet, phone, mm -hmm, okay. I see combinations or preference to the phone. Yeah. Mm, yes, they, they use a lot of them. Uh, which is hardest for you to use? Okay, nothing. Okay, so new section. Uh, let's talk about struggles. Uh, this is hardest. Uh, while prepare, <laughs> yes, this book out everything. Yeah, uh, and uh, me being in the Parisia, I hoped uh, and prayed uh, that uh, today will be uh, be able to meet you. And yeah, 
<laughs> I could. And uh, we have electricity right now, so I can use all my gadgets today. Uh, so uh, everything is uh, easy for you to use. It, it, it's cool. Uh, I myself believe um, that I had some struggles when I bought my first smartphone. For me, the first motion, it was like, okay, oh, something uh, new. I will try to call uh, to my family and say hi from uh, using new phone. And I couldn't uh, just uh, start it. <laughs> and I had to return to the shop and ask them, uh, tell me what I need to do. <laughs> Uh, to unblock it. Uh, so, um, obviously, uh, even when we adults, <laughs> we can have some struggles. And uh, other uh, young owners also have some struggles with technology. Uh, yes, the same on uh, these gadgets. Uh, yes. Uh, also, uh, how they adapt and uh, how our materials are shown, it's uh, sometimes a big surprise <laughs> when you prepare uh, using a laptop and then you see it on the uh, phone of the uh, children and you think, oh, okay, <laughs> no note is taken. Uh, so listen, it's about that. Uh, we will be talking about uh, different types of approaches. Right now, we really have very versatile um a choice yes we can uh, just uh, interchange and use differently we can go uh through different media yes uh okay uh and uh, we can mostly of them uh, we can do some productive activities but sometimes we feel like okay then we give phones to other students uh several minutes they're doing kahoot with us then oh and they're already watching uh, TikToks. Yeah, <laughs> so, the shit can happen very quickly. Uh, shift, no, not the, the bad word. Uh, the shift can happen very quickly and uh, not always uh, the technology would be supporting us. Uh, uh, but the, it doesn't mean that we need to stay away from it. As yes, I've seen in the comments previously that someone wrote, uh, we can't just uh, skip it uh, as it's a natural development of our world. We go through some technological uh, um, evolutions, and uh, obviously, we need to uh, develop other skills too. Yeah, adapt. Uh, the human beings, uh, especially good at what the are, yeah, it's adapting. Yeah. Uh, okay. Uh, let's talk with you in true or false about new generation, generation of alpha. Have you thought about it? This generation, uh, like uh, a new group. <laughs> of people now. Uh, okay. Uh, I see some of you heard, some, uh, well, some of you know. I will introduce this group to you uh, as you probably know them a bit. Uh, it's uh, people who have been born uh, between uh, 2010 and 2024. Yeah. So pretty close to us. It's other young learners, obviously. Uh, and uh, they look like that. Take a look. You've seen them. You've seen them, you've met them, <laughs> it's them, it's our students. Uh, they are Generation Alpha, uh, and they uh, have all uh, peculiarities, yes, and they also have their own, uh, um, let's say, uh, communication with them has some pros and cons. They can learn some uh, skills from them, but also they need to help them uh, to develop uh, their skills as they uh, think a bit differently and they need to support their thinking in uh, different ways than it uh, was done with us. Uh, so obviously uh, we look at them, we try to support them, but not all, every time we understand what's happening in their minds and how they see this world and how they communicate with it. Uh, I hope for my uh, topic will help you to understand them as uh, then we talk about technology it's not about gadgets only it's about social and emotional learning it's about uh, uh, critical thinking it's about creativity as uh, the tool needs to stay a tool yeah uh, like enough is enough you don't need to um, put it yeah less than us oh, okay less than us uh, uh, we will talk about it. I believe it's more stereotype than uh, a problem. As 
I don't know about you, but I heard that I'm lazy. Then I was uh, a primary learner, then a student, then I was an adult. So uh, I heard it about my students uh, when I was already a teacher. Uh, I heard uh, uh, the word, you are lazy, or the reason that something is not happening, la laziness, uh, uh, very often. Uh, and sometimes, yes, it can uh, be the reason. But sometimes it's uh, the, the just... Uh, uh, the type of communication is different. Yeah. Uh, the consumers, uh, thank you, Katerina, for mentioning it. Uh, yes. Uh, other students can be just consumers, not creators. But what we want, try to recall 21st century competences, what we want uh, for them to be uh, innovators, uh, problem solvers, um, individuals, and we want them uh, to develop their critical thinking. So, obviously, what we want, smart technologies yes uh, we want to go smart uh with it i will ask you i will be giving you statements tell me true or false uh let's go like that uh first of all this generation we've met them uh they are comfortable with this technology because they're born in the digital world is it true or is it false yes uh they comfortable but please try to understand that if we stop at this level uh, of understanding other students that they, uh, by default, they are comfortable with technology. It means that we uh, try to grow up uh, digital natives, people who are naturally live uh, uh, in this digital world and don't see beyond it. Uh, they don't move uh, the, the, like this set limitations on them saying, okay, it's your label, you're comfortable with technology. Not always it will be like that. Sometimes we need to show the roads how to deal with technology, and then, uh, it, yes, obviously it will be much more easier for this generation to deal with new technology than it. Uh, for me, uh, I would be saying that uh, uh, for you, but uh, I will be using myself as example, I will say differently, um, 18 will be dealing with technology a bit quicker than uh, I, so obviously it, it's okay, we are different generation. Uh, it's it's something that I tell myself when I uh, struggle with technology. <laughs> Different generation. Okay, next one. Uh, this statement: They prefer independent learning opportunities. Uh nothing standard. No, uh, they go for more independent types. Yes, yes. I also agree with it. Independent learning is what they try to do. Is uh, then we take a gadget. Uh, we usually do like that. We Google, yeah. And it's not like we uh, uh, need uh, a friend or classmate to ask help me to Google. <laughs> yes, we learn the roads. And also, if we start in this conversation tomorrow, we will be talking about uh, uh, artificial intelligence with you. So obviously, we will uh, leave uh, this topic uh, there. But um, also, this uh, artificial intelligence, this uh, Gemini, this uh, GPT chat, uh, obviously, we also go individually. Yes? Like independent learning, I will be using my prompts, I will be creating prompts to use with them. So, individual, uh, independent, and uh, your own resources. Yes? Okay, next one. They dislike teacher led instructions and restricted rules. Is it true about them? Yes, you see, they seem like some uh, troublemakers already, yes? So they have um, individual uh, type of learning, it's hard to control. Uh, they equipped this technology and they don't like restricted rules. What we, <laughs> what uh, the future they are <laughs> building with you, yes? Uh, but differently, they did like uh, teacher led instruction. If you... Uh, Riffing on them, uh, they will feel like you're trying to restrict uh, their, not, not freedom, it's even their uh, creative uh, space. Mm -hmm. Yeah, they, they have their own time management and they need uh, to understand that. Sometimes uh, their time management uh, would be a bit different from what we learned. I'm not telling you that your teaching style don't suit them. I'm telling you that they, as um, uh, human beings and the Ukrainians, mostly uh, learned how to uh, use technology, how to do the task uh, learning English differently as uh, they will propose different time management skills. They will propose different instructions. And uh, sometimes this experience, it's the wall that separates us from uh, this uh, generation alpha students. 
uh, that's why I'm telling you not just uh, break this wall. Let's take one small break. break. And uh, look there uh, to understand what's happening beyond the wall. And maybe we will be able to uh, start our communication and it will be productive. Okay, next one. They can navigate ebooks and programs without instructions. I told you it's true or false. It's not always true. Uh, and this is not too bad, too bad, but no, no. I will show you an example why it's not working like that. I will show you. Uh, let's uh, just uh, like uh, put a note here that we will be discussing it. Uh, they can do something. These ebooks, these programs, they can do something. But it's still the level of uh, digital uh, natives. It's not the level of digi uh, digital citizens. Um, what we want from uh, digital citizens, they own strategies, what to do. They understand uh, what's happening and why. Uh, if they just push buttons and something happens, it's at, uh, at the level of uh, me. <laughs> uh, test some trial. Maybe it's a blow up. Maybe something productive happened. <laughs> so, uh, it, it, they can do something. Yeah, I, I very like these answers. It depends. It depends and sometimes. Uh, so pay attention that uh, then we're talking about technology. They uh, need to understand. This is uh, there. We will find our new roles as teachers. We need to provide instructions. Not just uh, uh, tell them step by step what to do, but uh, uh, they can look around and help them then we see that uh, uh, there is a room for improvement. Next one. They benefit uh, from having clear learning uh, objectives. So clear learning objectives and then for every type of the task. Uh, so if you tell them to read, they need to understand uh, why they're reading, what we will learn uh, uh, from this reading, and uh, also uh, how to read. Yes, if you're listening, they need to understand objectives. Why we're listening to a particular topic. As uh, previously, then uh, I was given like 20 sentences and told uh, uh, to translate as a teenager. Uh, for me, it was like, okay, I'm doing for the sake of doing. <laughs> but uh, in uh, my students, especially primary students, I see that uh, they need explanation why they're doing something. That's why clear learning objectives is what very uh, important with them. It's, uh, they don't start this technology. They start this uh, uh, human mm, type of communication. They explain why we will be doing something. And sometimes you can just set uh, the objectives like that. We will be reading because we need to find 10 uh, cool words. Yes, Each of you will find your own 10 cool words in this text. And uh, students, okay. Uh, uh, it. it yeah, the hunt <laughs> uh, has begun, something like that. But they need clear learning objectives. Uh, let's uh, go further. So they can adapt uh, to learn uh, to lecture-based learning without, oh, sorry, uh, without any visual. And just uh, the chat is uh, close on some parts of text for me. So uh, if you give them a lecture uh, without any infographics, without any visual material, Ah, uh, they can adapt it. Ah, uh, it's difficult for them. Yes, uh, it's difficult for them. So obviously it's false. They can't ad adapt to lectures. That's why it's a problem if we have a lot of teacher talking time and uh, we provide uh, student uh, less student oriented lessons, then it's hard for them, especially if we don't use a lot of uh, this interactive things, yes? Uh, if you don't use uh, photos, if you don't use the videos, uh, imagine if I just uh, started this uh, topic with you and didn't show you any picture. It's a bit sad, <laughs> I can say. So it, it's definitely false. Uh, so lectures, we don't enjoy lectures, but we uh, and adults with you. Uh, so we can, we can struggle with lectures, but still. Uh, we will find uh, our way around it. Uh, for primary learners, especially for this generation, they need some support, visual support, uh, and also uh, activities that you will provide for them. Uh, it's important to pay attention to the pace. Yes. Uh, and um, right now I had uh, some uh, voices in LT community about uh, different type of uh, sites that we use, Word Wars, Kahoot, 
uh, that they sometimes uh, just lack uh, elements of playing uh, that take away your time to learn and uh, students don't uh, remember a lot so retention is not happening uh, they just come to play and play uh, so um, uh, that's why they need to understand yeah they should look for um, like a balance so it's not definitely not a lecture for the students but also not uh, a lot of uh, cahoots cahoots and cahoots yeah cahoots about cahoots let's call it like that uh, okay they depend on interactive activities and uh, gamified elements. So it means that without this, they won't be able to learn. So they like they are uh, so much dependent on it. They really depend on uh, uh, interactions. Yeah, but here I would say it depends. Uh, in some cases, if you leave them uh, to themselves, they will depend. It's easier that they how to uh, they learn. They look for interactions and uh, they play games. They enjoy it. Yes, but uh, they need to support their learning and go further. What we want from their learning is that they will develop their skills and uh, just pushing buttons. And uh, tell you that level of uh, uh, ta um, test and trial. Uh, it's it's me. <laughs> I can do it for my uh, leisure time for for my enjoyment. Yeah, but uh, beyond my work, uh, it, it can't be combined. Uh, but uh, students, if we just leave them, we will be just a digital natives. So that's why uh, with interactive activities, we need to be uh, very careful. They need to have some purpose, and then they will be working. Um, so next one, they are likely to do, adapt. Yeah, problem solving, critical thinking. They can uh, develop them quicker than other people. I can tell you that different the games uh, teach us uh, problem solving. Uh, also, different types of communication can help uh, us learn uh, how, uh, how to solve some problems. And also, uh, we can uh, uh, be exposed to more information and learn how to um, understand, is it a fake? Is it real? Yeah, it's critical thinking will be working there. Uh, so evaluating information is important. Okay, it's true. So obviously, they are already inclined to this. And this is uh, um, on the road. Uh, they can do this uh, easier. And, they, uh, and we, we understand we want to support this uh, uh, abilities of them. Uh, so um, it's a good start, uh, common ground. Yeah, okay, next one. They have short uh, attention spots. They can't focus for a long time. Is it true or is it false? Okay. Okay. Uh, I will be fighting uh, you about it as it's a stereotype. It's a stereotype and I especially uh, have taken it here uh, and put it uh, for you to see that it, it's not true. We can say it about any type of person right now, especially when uh, these Ukrainians um, uh, are under the stress and uh, it's hard for us to pay attention. That's why we've given you a shorter session uh, today with other speakers. Uh, as uh, It's okay. Then we under pressure, it's hard for us to pay attention. We lose our focus. And uh, losing that focus, it's okay. And uh, um, we need to work on our retention. Obviously, we can develop it. We can, uh, they are not motivated, this generation, uh, uh, to develop the uh, retention. But uh, what we can uh, do, we can find approach, yes, uh, a bit different, not lecture, yes, uh, add some uh, gamification, uh, give them uh, some secret for them to solve, yes, uh, give them some challenge to think critically, to create something, and uh, they will pay more attention. Uh, okay, the last one. They are hard to teach. Is it true about them? Uh, I enjoy that you say that uh, mostly no, but uh, let's be tr truthful. <laughs> it depends. <laughs> Sometimes it's uh, hard to teach. And uh, they need to acknowledge that uh, they are from different generations and we have our own uh, strong points and weak points. 
uh, what we try to teach our students, a communicative approach, uh, that communication uh, can help you to survive in this world. Uh, and uh, it means that we need to use this principle also ourselves as teachers, that uh, we can find uh, common ground no matter what other learning and teaching styles will be. Uh, they just uh, adapt uh, to each other then we communicate, yeah. Uh, I'm not talking about compromises, but uh, closer to it, yes, we can uh, go like that. Okay, I believe it's uh, time to take you with myself. Give me a second. I'm going to the Spark platform and we're going deep. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay. I'm taking you to the Spark uh, platform. Obviously, we have a teacher cabinet here and uh, we can go uh, already to the book. Uh, I will be showing you a book and also uh, will show you a book. Um, I've chosen this. Uh, it's a level three. You, some of you uh, will receive it today. Uh, along this re registration to the platform. Okay. I want to start with this picture. Ah, imagine we are having a lesson. It's online. No, this one, <laughs> this one. Ah, uh, you know, top owner. Uh, we have a lesson online. Uh, and uh, obviously, I need to communicate and tell you uh, uh, how much you can learn from this book, uh, how it can be impressive to you. But uh, you just enjoy using your gadgets. And uh, it's a struggle for us to communicate. Uh, but such photos can find uh, common ground to us. So you should use visuals. Uh, and sometimes when we look at the uh, textbooks, sometimes we look like uh, picture books. Yes, sometimes we look like albums. But uh, always choose the picture that has a story behind. I will tell you a story behind this picture. Uh, the photographer, it's National Geographic Explorer, one of the famous ones, Mamum. Uh, uh, he uh, took this photo um, in a remote um, village in Indonesia. Uh, why? Why he decided to choose uh, this photo? Because he saw himself in his children, how he played without gadgets, uh, how he was uh, creating his own toys uh, from natural materials that he, he could uh, find uh, around uh, his home. Uh, the same of these children are doing. They can find something that uh, will be connecting uh, adults and uh, uh, young learners. We can ask our learners uh, what materials they would use <laughs> to create a cool toy, uh, and then we can uh, use it as a project. We can start talking about something. We can uh, develop a conversation differently, propose them uh, not to stick only to idea that right now they see some side. Uh, to stick to the idea uh, that we are discussing the real world. And everything that we do, it's about the real world. No matter that we will be with you. Uh, you know, we can be online, we can be offline, we can have blended learning. And uh, uh, then we just say, oh, this is better at, uh, format of learning. This is a uh, uh, more complicated one, better results here, uh, worse results there. Uh, it's limitations that we put on ourselves. What we need, uh, we want the same human type of approach to anything that we do and bring in real world to everything that we discuss. Uh, if you try to um, build rapport, if you try to communicate uh, ideas to your students, uh, try to start with real world and ask them questions about their own lives. Uh, I could give them a lecture. Uh, I could uh, play a board game with them, just naming what they see. But uh, the best what I can do is try to relate this photo for them. How they do that? Storytelling, obviously. Uh, some questions can help you. Teacher book would support you. I learned a story about this photographer from the teacher book. And uh, for each photo, we have the same uh, thing. Uh, I will show you what's important. Uh, we need to use uh, cartoons and everything that is cartoonish 
in the way that looks like uh, other uh, young learners can draw it. Uh, if it's too cartoonish, it, it separates us. Imagine you looking at, I don't know, uh, Ivan Machuk pictures, and uh, it's your news, yeah? Uh, you receive news, uh, not this uh, real world pictures, but uh, it can be Picasso, for example, drawing you uh, some events. Uh, it's a bit crazy. Yes, it's a bit crazy. It's not uh, so relatable. It's hard to relate. Uh, the same happens with this uh, generation. Uh, they need to see something that they can quickly relate. It's something that they can draw. Uh, like we can make a poster like that, I believe, uh, draw and uh, using this uh, um, simple forms yeah, uh, to repeat. As it's a uh, much more simple, simple mystic drawing, yeah. And uh, then, uh, our students can uh, repeat it. Uh, okay, what I wanted to to show you, I told you, especially one of the stereotypes is that uh, we don't need to give any type of instruction to have uh, teenagers to understand what they are doing. Uh, I will show you. This is homework for this platform, the same uh, unit. Uh, okay, they need to do that. They can uh, use their uh, phones. Uh, can you tell me what I need to do? Like, give me a direction. What I need to do? I'm opening it, looking at it, and uh, uh, help me to understand uh, what I need to do, what the uh, initial action should be. I have what practice, I have picture, uh, I have button, yeah. Hit. Uh, what? I, I need to hit someone. <laughs> uh, click on button. Okay. But you see, I go and uh, if I can read it, uh, say next, next screen. Okay, let's do that. Oh no. You see? Uh, the picture ch changed. Nothing happened. Practice, practice. Then a picture or. Uh, we already developed another strategy for it. Open. Okay. Let's let's hit the picture. <laughs> the U.S. Okay. The U.S. The U.S. Okay. The U.S. I the exquisite card. Yeah. The U.S. Okay, good. Let's try this one. Brazil. Uh, you understand why Brazil. I am doing it easier the next time? Brazil. Because you told me what I need to do. Uh, Brazil. Because I already Brazil. an example. That's why I um, emphasize, if you're trying to use uh, any type of platform, it's very important, it's necessary, that you do like that. You choose the platforms that provide you this uh, uh, task that you can show during the lessons. Uh, your students would be like mimicking you. They will be modeling uh, you, they will be repeating after you. If we see that you hit hitting the card the same day, it's easier for them to do. Uh, this uh, digital literacy, everything that we teach them, it's important that uh, we show ourselves using it. And the, uh, it's easier to expect that uh, other students will be able to use something, but they are really not. I will show you for these books we have toolbars. This is a uh, timer. Even with teenagers, then I'm just telling them, there is a timer, you can use it for reading, check how quickly you can read some uh, text. Uh, they don't use it. Mm. But then every lesson, then I want to use timer. I use it with them. I notice that they start using themselves uh, in their uh, homework too. It's easier for them to use it like that. Uh, so obviously, it's easier and easier to go. The same can happen with any type of uh, digital thing that seems like, okay, they will be able to do it. Mm. I will show you. Let's return. Let's return. We will take a second. Okay. Let's hit this one, the fourth. Homework. It's homework. We are going down. Okay. Uh, sort. Okay. I know. I did such tests. I know. I can do that. Uh, but not all these uh, students know how to sort, how to do some activities. It's important. If you provide them this word wall, yes, maybe we will learn how to play a game or two, but not all the types of activities that uh, it can provide you. The same with any type of platform. It's not, 
it's not the idea of using, uh, using digital materials, it's uh, about how you will introduce this tool and how often you will be using this tool. Uh, if it supports you, uh, then it will be going uh, like that. Uh, but different activities, different measures. Let's hit the third one. Maybe we will find matching. No, it's not matching, it's uh, text. But uh, obviously, then I do different activities. I show them how to choose, how to play, how, how to do multiple choice. Um, I show them the ropes, yeah, what to do. And especially this platform can propose you even uh, record your voice. Uh, and uh, for young learners, it's hard. The most of the asks, it's uh, show, uh, uh, like, uh, help us to show other students <laughs> how to record voice. Uh, so it's it's about that, that uh, yeah, they need to learn together uh, as teacher and uh, classroom. Uh, we can't separate ourselves as uh, saying, okay, I will give them technology and they will do something. We will be just developing as the digital uh, natives. But what we want with you, it's a bit different approach. What we want with you, we want citizens. We want uh, people who will, who will learn in their open way. But uh, we will be uh, uh, great communicators. <laughs> we will be easy to teach and uh, you will enjoy teaching. Yes. Uh, so that's all that I wanted to tell you today about uh, this topic. It's a pretty big one. We are just starting to talk about uh, technology. Uh, also, uh, my tips for you. Let's uh, summarize what you can do. First of all, uh, Try to create uh, learning purposes. If you set clear purposes, objectives for yourself, for students, they understand you. you uh, they understand what they need to do. And they understood uh, uh, how to do it even with, without you. But uh, clear learning purpose should be there. Uh, not doing for the sake of doing. So next, interactive activities, yes. But they need to capture to their visual styles. If we just, uh, you know, they can create a lot of, uh, no, let's call word walls, for example, yeah? And you use it each time for a particular word, different pictures. As it's hard to find the same picture. Uh, it's a problem. As visual learners, they stick to visual images. And then you change it every time. You force us, yes? For teenagers, it's okay. They can analyze what is happening. But with primary learners, if you choose uh, a picture or a table, it should be uh, in your quizlets, in your word walls, in bamboozles, in everything. The same picture. It's very important. Um, and then, help students navigate, help them, support them in uh, this process. If you're interested in developing your own skills, we are there for you. Um, if you're interested in uh, checking, is it possible we can provide you with access uh, to try it? But first of all, it starts not with uh, just giving technology to students and hope and pray that it will be working. It's more about uh, helping them uh, to understand that uh, they are over learning style. It's something that uh, we acknowledge. We don't ignore it. Yes? And then uh, individual learning styles. Not often we can uh, propose it to students, but uh, pay attention to the uh, their needs. It's important. I told you uh, everything the, um, uh, surround uh, everything that we do. If it's uh, uh, around us, uh, teacher talk at time, other needs, other learning priorities. Uh, no, it's not uh, the best uh, type how we can uh, communicate with. Uh, uh, other students right now that we have, uh, what we can do is offer opportunities. Uh, offer them the choice. Sometimes it's solo project. Sometimes it's a group project. Ask them. They can uh, give you some tips <laughs> uh, what we want from you. Uh, okay. If you need to communicate with me about this conference or just uh, about uh, some materials, uh, ask me about digital things and just have a cool chat. Uh, please use my phone or my email. Um, also, you can find all the information and uh, uh, test uh, accesses uh, on our site. So uh, I will give you five minutes. Let's uh, say to 
uh, to relax, to enjoy a quiet moment, and then we will return with the quiz. Okay? So don't leave. Uh, we are, uh, still have one big section of this conference. Okay?
um, today we will be happy uh, uh, to give uh, these three books uh, the, their new owners uh, and uh, take a look. It's not just books. They are not giving you just printed books as other topic is digital kit. Yes. Uh, Victoria, tell me, what does it mean, ELT uh, platform will be next to your book? So, it means that the winner will get the access uh, to this platform, online platform that we have already talked about. And uh, um, uh, he or she will be lucky to have access for one year. So, please, I just want to welcome you to... Uh, take part in this uh, uh, quiz uh, and uh, uh, to become a winner. Yes, and I know that uh, Kitbox uh, also goes with uh, teach access to Cambridge One and obviously, obviously, look goes with Spark uh, platform. So um, I already anticipate using it and then sharing your uh, experience with other platforms and telling us uh, what you enjoyed uh, today and how you implemented all the ideas that uh, ELT consultants uh, shared with you. Uh, so, uh, to start, we need to use slider one more time. So, you know the drill. You scan the code or use uh, slider.com in uh, Google. Yeah, slider.com. And then use the other hashtag. Old Tana is with us. Okay, uh, one more time. Uh, okay, uh, tell me, ELT consultants, how you felt about today? Uh, was it lovely enough for you? Did, did you enjoy this day? Actually, I'm looking for tomorrow. Uh, maybe I'm a little bit uh, tired, but anyway, I want to, um, to present my talk tomorrow as well. Okay, uh, take a look in the chat. Uh, some people are leaving just because they don't be, uh, want to be upset of, <laughs> of uh, not receiving a book. Uh, I can tell you that you communicate with ELT consultants and they can provide you with uh, trial access uh, to materials. Or as Tanya told you, you can just go to Cambridge One and uh, enjoy it uh, uh, this moment. Yeah, but let's uh, give it a try to have the quiz nevertheless. Uh, so, let's see. Uh, every time uh, that we will check the question, we will be able to see uh, who is the winner. Pay attention, not only correct answer is important, but also how quickly you answer. That's why hit the buttons <laughs> uh, like normal. Okay, a lot of people are joining. Let's give it a second. More, more. Okay. Uh, we will start with a general question about linguist. Maybe you know, it's uh, like uh, a common knowledge about us. Uh, and I hope you know it. Okay. Oh, I see some um, regional uh, consultants joining us. <laughs> uh, yeah, okay. So, the first question like that. We bring a lot of primary student books to Ukraine. Uh, in how many languages these books are available? I know that today we had two sections, German and English. So, obviously, two languages are there. How much more? How do you think? Uh, Vika, can you uh, name several languages that uh, we bring to Ukraine? Mm, I guess Polish. Polish, okay. Tanya, what I about spoke... you? Can you add something to this? <laughs> to <discussion>? name the languages? <laughs> yeah, what languages? What languages? So what no, we definitely, we definitely have French, uh, Spanish, German, English, Polish. I remember once upon a time we had Chinese, but I don't know whether it's a fact these days. No, too bad uh, we don't support uh, uh, countries that don't support Ukraine. Uh, that's why. <laughs> uh, let's uh, speak uh, not to Chinese. Okay. 
Okay. Uh, I also see the chat is uh, very active, uh, chosen between also many. Uh, yes, uh, we will check. And uh, I believe we have a room to, for improvement with this question. Uh, we can uh, bring more books, uh, but nevertheless, we bring a lot. Okay, uh, most of uh, people believe that it's four. No, I hope you heard that uh, Vika and Tanya named a bit more than four. Uh, so, uh, it's, it's six, yeah, English, German, Polish, yeah, Italian, what's the rest? Spanish, Spanish. Mm -hmm. and French. Yes, Pr pretty a lot. Uh, so, <laughs> if you have colleagues, you know, uh, well, you should uh, direct them. Okay, let's go for next question. Oh, a little bit is important. Uh, the first one, the winner is uh, Titana, but we have four questions, so the little bit uh, will be changing. Let's continue. I just want to remind that those who are typing their answers in the chat are not participating in the quiz. So yeah, you still have a little time to join Slido. on Slido. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Thank you for mentioning. Uh, so try to mm, your luck with uh, Slido. And also, I believe it's a mm, question about uh, Tanya's topic, yeah? Oh, yeah. <laughs> Nika, do you know the answer? I remember the word foundation. I guess this is uh, the right answer. Hey! I would choose <laughs> this I one. would choose yeah, pushing the uh, buttons correctly. It's the a basic. Variant. But I see the chat is convinced that it is the fifth one. They are the confident about it. Okay, okay. You told me not to make very difficult questions, so <laughs> I followed the advice. <laughs> and yeah. uh, I hope uh, I hope those who read the uh, the whole answers faster. <laughs> did push the button correctly. <laughs> yes, and uh, this technology is, is easy to go uh, complicated very quickly, but uh, to go simple about it, it's uh, a complicated task. <laughs> okay, uh, so uh, almost no variants. Okay, let's see what. No, obviously. Uh, yes, and we really expect uh, Tanya to provide uh, materials for like, competences and uh, reading more about digital literacy. I myself uh, know that I will be taking these guides and uh, checking it. Uh, I believe some cool ideas are there. Okay, okay, we either have a change. Let's go for the next one. It's about uh, Vika's topic. Yes, definitely the ELT platform. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I asked the LT consultants not to put variants all mentioned above, uh, but <laughs> uh, it's here, so maybe it's a trick one. Yeah, we have talked about teachers and students. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and different platform. Uh, it's I believe uh, they have a lot of different proposals right now. How to go digitally? That's why not all this. We pay attention uh, uh, what limitations of which and what proposals uh, are for us. Yeah, that's why we we hope to find everything. But it's important to check. The technology need to be checked. Just don't go like me. Test and trial <laughs> to see. What will will go wrong? Okay, the fifth one. Okay, the chat also cho chosen the fifth one right now. Okay, I see it. Uh, number five. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay. Five, four, three. Last the cups. Okay. Okay. Oh, uh, you know, I believe it will be the hardest question. <laughs> so, <laughs> yeah, so actually, uh, you need to have supervisor and teacher, and um, this platform can be used as a digital 
uh, self-study solution for students. And I guess uh, uh, we need to have uh, one more session of uh, uh, this ELT platform use, but maybe uh, next time, next month or so. Oh, and then next time, then uh, it can be tomorrow. So please come tomorrow and uh, listen more about uh, how MM publications use uh, digital materials and uh, uh, provide you this platform. So I support you to come there. And obviously, what I told you, tool needs to be a tool. Yeah, so <laughs> the first uh, priority is using the tools. Uh, okay, okay, I see we have uh, other leader. Okay, let's go for my question. How can we best help our English learners to become digital citizens? What we need to do? Teach them how to chat online really fast. <laughs> I have, I have a similar answer somewhere there about digital literacy. <laughs> I really <laughs> like that one. It's actually a nice to, uh, skill to have mm -hmm. to chat really fast, especially when you want to win a quiz. <laughs> yeah. Okay, I see that the chat uh, was paying attention to what I was talking about. So obviously you had some words uh, very often from me. Ah, I will tell you, uh, Pani Maria, that it's not my sense of humor. It's uh, Jimmy Nee uh, was helping me, you know, one of the I, <laughs> uh, generators. I asked what I can ask about a particular topic and uh, he proposed me variants and then I told him make it funny and he helped me <laughs> to add humor to it. So if you have a very strange or particular humor you're not ready uh, to expose your young learners to, uh, you can use uh, such uh, help and hands uh, and they will be uh, uh, really providing you with uh, appropriate uh, vocabulary and grammar. Okay, so now we have two variants. Uh, help them critically uh, or show them how to be uh, good digital role models. Okay, I believe it's an interesting topic about how to be uh, digi uh, digital role models. I will just take it uh, for the next webinars. Okay, but definitely the first what we want, they, they need to develop what they naturally inclined. So problem solving. Uh, uh, skills and also a uh, critical approach to what we learn. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> so we have a winner and this is the hardest question uh, that we need to, to discuss much more. How to use an, uh, the LT platform from a MEM publication. Yeah. So it's a topic for us to develop. Uh, thank you for helping us not only just uh, to see how uh, we can uh, Mm. share some information with you, but also see what information you need. That's why I will mention about certificates, but also I mention, uh, need to mention uh, that, uh, let's say, uh, we uh, give you these three books, uh, but uh, we will give each book to each winner. Uh, there is such slide that you need right now to make a screenshot and uh, then, uh, then you have time to send a letter to this uh, email training at linguistae. Uh, this is the title Remote Quizo Digital Day, uh, Digital Kids Day. Yeah. Uh, your name, your city or village, Nova Posta branch number, your phone number. Also, I will ask you to write the title of uh, publishing house, publishing house, not the book, publishing house. Uh, and uh, from what publishing house you want to receive this book and also the level that you would like to receive. So obviously we will try to cater to your needs and not just uh, push some books on you and saying, okay, uh, you need the second level. <laughs> I believe in you. <laughs> uh, it's uh, teaching second level. So please uh, write uh, the title of the publishing house and also write uh, your um, uh, uh, preferred level. But I will tell you, the first 
will, will start the letter, you'll be able to choose the most. Uh, if you take your time, yeah, you use the time to write uh, to, to a such letter, uh, sorry, options will be limited. So we expect uh, this week uh, letters from you and we will be sending it next week. Uh, I believe we are uh, finished the first digital day from us. I need to mention that your certificates will be sent uh, to you in 10 working days after you fill in the form that we will send to you, to you through Zoom. So, you know, automatic letter, please check it. And uh, there will be a form that you can uh, uh, fill in and give your opinions. And also, if you need uh, additional consultations, you can also to, like tick it in the form and we will contact you directly. Okay, so final words. Uh, Vika, Tanya, do you have something to say? No. No. Uh, then thank the, you. The final uh, word will be you. like uh, seeing you tomorrow. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah, I was trying to make a joke. <laughs> like, of course, we always have something to say. And uh, yeah, uh, thank you for coming, everyone. Uh, and uh, thank you for being interested and thank you for uh, developing in uh, frames of digital literacy. It is important and it is inevitable uh, that it's coming to us. So we'll be happy to see you tomorrow on uh, both uh, National Geographic Learning and MAM Publications and Cambridge University Press and Assessment uh, and also Cambridge Education Sessions. So yes, we have a big surprise for you tomorrow. Yeah. Thanks a lot and see you tomorrow. Yeah, see you tomorrow. Thanks for being supportive and active today. And um, I'm looking forward to uh, see you tomorrow. <laughs>